I'm Bryce Tomlinson from AHeartToWitness.com, and this is Mind Power. Many of you have, like me, purchased an iPod docking station, only to find out that your brand new iPod Nano 5G doesn't work with it. So I'm going to do my part to put just a little of the power back in the hands of the people. Today, our tutorial is not for the weak at heart. While watching this, you may very well cower in fright. Your discretion is advised. I recently purchased an iPod Nano 5G. After enjoying Apple's latest offering, I also decided to purchase a used Jensen iJam docking station for it. The iJam has great big sound in a tiny little package. It really sounds great. The only problem is the 5G Nano doesn't work with the iJam. After doing some research online, I found out that many of the old docking systems don't work with the new Nano. While earlier Nanos are able to pump their sound directly out through the docking port into the iJam's luxurious but compact sound system, including the 2G Nano I tested it with, the 5G Nano only plays its sound out through the minuscule built-in speakers on the iPod itself. By experimenting, I was able to find out that the iJam could not play audio from its line in port in the back while in iPod mode. However, I also found out that the iPod could still play music out of its own speakers while charging and while the Jensen unit was in aux mode using its auxiliary line in. Now the obstacle seemed to be, how can I plug in the audio cable while the dock is in the way? Hold that thought, we'll come back to that in just a minute. To further complicate matters, this particular used Jensen iJam also had a broken power switch. So if I wanted to fix this, I obviously had to open the product up and have a look inside. Before I go on, I want to tell you that what you are about to see is pure hardware hacking. If you do this procedure, you will definitely void your warranty. And Jensen is not going to be your friend anymore. You could break or ruin your iJam, you could fry your iPod. You might short circuit your electricity in your house. You could accidentally burn your house down. You might end up running naked down the street yelling, fire, fire, fire. Your town could end up in martial law. The nation could collapse. The world could end. And all this because you wanted a little music. Or you might just have the solution to world peace. It's up to you, but either way, we here at MindPower and HeartToWitness.com don't claim any responsibility for anything bad that happens. However, if, uh, if it does work out for you, we would like a nice little love letter. First, take the mesh off the front speakers. You can use a thin hobby knife around the edges of the mesh to slowly and gently pull it outward, and it will come out. Under that, you'll see four screws. Take out those four screws, and the front face should come out. Inside, you'll find a collar full of cables. You'll need to pull that out of its seat to be able to move the face out any further. To remove the top of the unit, you will need to unscrew the subwoofer from the back of the lid. The top is also fastened around the edges by just a few dots of glue. These are really easily broken if you pull just a little, and they're just a small deterrent to keep you from figuring it out. Pull the speaker cover away from the back of the unit just enough to pull the top out from between the speaker and its cover. Now, I can see the power switch. But as it turns out, this switch is broken. But truthfully, whoever turns the power completely off on their alarm clock? And if you use this power switch to turn it off, you can't turn it on with the remote. How pointless is that? So forget it. I just removed the switch, soldered the two wires together, and seated them right back where they came from. Problem solved. Now to close the iJam up and fasten the chrome switch to the outside. You can use any epoxy or super glue to fasten the switch back on the outside. Okay, so now back to the audio problem. To get the audio cable into the headphone jack while the Nano is still plugged into the dock, I used a Dremel tool to carve a round groove into the side of the dock itself. This way, I can plug the cable in and easily slide my iPod into the dock. This was really scary because I actually carved about one millimeter right into part of the circuit board that the dock's attached to. So when I cleaned it up and plugged it in, I wasn't even sure it would work anymore. To my relief, it works. And now I can play audio through the iJam from both my iPod 2G Nano as well as my 5G Nano. 
if I keep the Jensen unit in auxiliary line in mode. Thanks for watching. Yeah.